What's happening, guys? Just got done watching Black Magic Design's announcement here. It is Thursday, September 14th here, 2023. Lots of good announcements there. New gear, new equipment, new stuff from Black Magic Design. But what I'm here to talk to you about is some new updates to, yes, you got it, DaVinci Resolve 18.6. Currently in beta, if you go check for updates, you should see it in DaVinci Resolve. And just a caveat I got to put out there, back up your database before upgrading to any beta version, back up that database. It's gonna make a backup of all your projects, does not include your media. All of the DaVinci Resolve projects gonna back all that stuff up for you. Um, but definitely do that before you download and install 18.6 beta if you're going with the beta version, just to make sure that everything is safe and backed up. So we're just gonna run through some stuff here. I got a printout of what's included. Maybe we'll jump on Resolve, take a look at a few things, but just wanted to give you guys some of the cool updates that I see in here um, and new things that got added. I didn't know this was coming. Pretty cool though and excited about it. So where are we gonna start? We gotta start with Fairlight, right? As your audio guy here in DaVinci Resolve, we're talking Fairlight. So I am gonna just be reading it off the sheet here. We're gonna talk about it a little bit. The first one they have is the ability to import multiple mono audio files with suffixes as a multi-channel clip. So I'm not exactly sure what that means. Got to look into it, but it sounds like if we have multiple mono clips, it can come in with different channels within a given clip, which means you could go to your audio properties and select a different channel for a given audio clip if you wanted to do that. So that's kind of cool. Could come in handy. Um, this next one is, is pretty big, and it seemed like a lot of people uh, were interested in this. I was on the live stream with uh, Mr. Alex Tech while we were uh, watching the uh, Blackmagic um, announcements and stuff. And the announcement was support for target audio loudness standards on export. So what does that mean? That means that uh, we set our loudness of our audio for the platform that we're gonna be using. So in my case, YouTube, right? YouTube is minus 14 luffs. Maybe you're working with broadcast, it's minus 23 luffs. It depends on where you're uploading your videos as to what that target loudness might be. Now, generally you're gonna edit your whole video, edit your audio, get your good levels and all that stuff. And you're going to set your target loudness at the very end. And what this is saying is, hey, if you set it for YouTube and then let's say, for example, OK, I upload it to YouTube, but then uh, I'm going to go ahead and upload it, you know, for something like broadcast that needs minus 23 luffs. Well, I can change it on the export. So let's just jump in Resolve. I'm going to show you where that is. So I have a random project open here. And if I go into the uh, export tab, I'm just going to do a custom export here under the audio section. Down here, we have this new feature right here, audio normalization. So I can turn it on and then I can click the little drop down and select any type of optimization that I want or normalization, I should say, that I want. And there are two new um, normalizations here. Um, I believe the Netflix one was updated. Was it the Netflix one? But they also added Disney um, and... Disney 5.1. Oh, I'm sorry, not Netflix. It was YouTube. They have a YouTube one in here. Boom, YouTube. So there you go. Target level, minus one uh, dBTP. And then target loudness is minus 14 luffs. So it's going to do, I guess, the work in the background to get the correct uh, loudness level for you for whatever option that you pick here. Now, I'm sure that's going to work fine. I would say whatever you're delivering for, I would do it and check it in Resolve first so you could bring everything up to that loudness level. But once you get it set, if you need to export for a different platform or whatever it might be, one of these options here, then you could just do it on the export. And I don't see why that wouldn't work great and save you a whole bunch of time in having to uh, redo your, your target loudness there. So that one is pretty sweet. I like that a lot. I did mention the uh, Disney and YouTube uh, loudness standards are added. And then the next one that's here is new Fairlight Effects loudness meter with the ability to monitor multiple buses. So I'm just gonna jump into Fairlight here. I'm not exactly sure where I would find uh, the effects monitor. I'm not really sure. I'm gonna have to look that up because it sounds kind of cool, but I don't know where that would appear. Um, I don't know. Don't know. I'm going to have to look into that because it sounds kind of cool. So uh, I'll check that out and um, we'll be making a video about that. Let's see if I go to effects monitor. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right. So I'm going to have to look into that one, but it sounds like it could be a handy tool to be able to monitor uh, some of our, our effects and look at resolve here real quick. I'm going to have to look that up. Next one we have is um, intelligent abbreviation for long channel names. That's pretty good because sometimes channel names get pretty long. So that's good that it's going to intelligently shorten them for you. So hopefully it still makes sense. 
We've got support for panning presets for 3D audio height control. Now, I don't know exactly what that is. I'm going to look into it, but it sounds like it has to do with the spatial audio, whether we want it, you know, to sound like it's over here or over there, up here, down there. So that's kind of what that sounds like. Uh, support for parallel bus sends and bus outputs with up to three per bus tile. Now, I'm going to look into this again. All this stuff I'm going to dig into a little more here, but it sounds like what that's going to allow you to do is have multiple bus sends and outputs um, with up to three three sends available per bus. So that could be handy depending on how you want to route stuff. I did make a video uh, recently about using bus sends and bus outputs and how you can use a bus send to, uh, you know, as, as like a, um, an effects bus, which uh, actually that was a resolve con. I talked about that at resolve con. I'm going to be making a video about it here. It's on my list of videos to make. So um, you can use buses really for, for like effects things and, and whatnot, um, just to kind of route things and work with things a little bit differently. And that can come in handy. So being able to have more options there, always a plus. So now it looks like we have something where we can auto manage audio effects for multiple tracks or buses with keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to dig in there, find out what those shortcuts are. We're going to see how they work. But hey, more options on how to work with things is always welcome here, right? So th some things that can speed up our workflow a little bit. Um, it, could be, it could be pretty good. You now have keyboard customization for support for multiple track context actions. So we can just add keyboard shortcuts to do different things. Um, we got support for UWA audio, vivid 3d spatial audio format. Now I'm not too familiar with that, but if you know what it is, maybe you're probably excited about that one. And the last one here under our Fairlight uh, updates is the ability to assign Fairlight effects default settings from an effect dialog context menu menu. So maybe that means that once we have an effect and we, for example, maybe, you know, set up a reverb so that it's got a long delay on it, right? We want that to be the default settings instead of, you know, whatever normally is your default settings. We can go ahead and save different default settings for a given effect. So that's pretty cool. And I think that could come in really handy because a lot of times I'm going to use similar settings on an effect. So the fact that you can save that as a default setting is pretty good. Now, moving on to some of the other big things that they announced, they announced a new camera or actually two new cameras um, and almost three, but new cameras with new features um, to the cloud sync stuff. There's a cloud workflow sync where you can film on your camera. It'll automatically get sent to resolve. So if somebody's working on resolve and somebody's filming, we can all sync up. Everything is like very fluid back and forth. You don't have to figure out how to send files and all that. Um, really big feature there that if you're working in Blackmagic Cloud and let's say I have a project, right? And the project's in the Blackmagic Cloud that, okay, it always used to be, I had my media, we can share the project, but you need your own media on your side. And we have to send that media back and forth somehow, right? Well, now you don't have to do that. Now the media is going to get uploaded to Blackmagic Design. So if you're working with me on a project, you can just say, oh, hey, let me download that media and boom, you've got it, right? And in addition to the project itself and being able to work on that and resolve, now you're going to have the media so we can all share it together. It's going to be real fluid back and forth. No need to find like another way to send over your files and stuff. Um, Blackmagic is putting all that under one roof now so we can work seamlessly with people who are maybe not right here in our office or in our studio. Real handy, and uh, I might be trying that feature out pretty soon here. Um, maybe, just might, just might. So uh, stay tuned, I'll talk more about that uh, when I give it a try. The other thing that's cool with all that syncing and the new cameras is that with the new cameras, they automatically create proxy files for you and those will get uploaded. You can select whether you want the full res files uploaded or just the proxy files uploaded. There's so many different options of how you can work with that whole setup. Uh, I, I think if you're in that kind of environment where you need those kind of tools, it could be really, really handy and you can really customize it to work best for your particular situation. So really cool on uh, how all that stuff has been coming together. Some other stuff here under their key new features, the, uh, uh, let's see, uh, support for outer text stroke in titles and subtitles. So what that means to me is like, you know, the black line that goes around your letters, a stroke around the outside of the letters. Um, it looks like that's now supported in both titles and subtitles. So that's pretty handy. We have the ability to assign and apply favorite keywords to clips and markers. So maybe you have particular clips, you want particular keywords, you can assign those just to kind of help you organize and, and uh, keep track of things a little bit better. So that's always good, right? Help improve our workflow a little bit. 
Support for Fusion, USD scenes with materials and volumes. I don't do much Fusion, so I don't even know what that means, but I'm sure Casey's going to have something on that. You probably want to check out his channel. Again, import uh, multiple mono audio files with suffixes as a multi-channel clip. We already talked about that and support for target audio loudness standards on renders. We talked about that. Now in the cut and edit tab, there's some cool things in here. Um, there's the stroke thing around the letters, which we already talked about. Uh, the ability to copy and paste markers in the source viewer in and the timeline. So you can copy them, I guess, back and forth, which is pretty handy. I use markers a lot, uh, mostly on the timeline level to put where I want my chapters to be for YouTube. Um, what else we got here? We got change speed for multiple selected clips from the dialogue and inspector. So I like that, that you can select multiple clips, change the speed of them with either the dialogue box for your changing your speed or within the inspector um, where we can do that. You select the clip, open your inspector. You're going to see your uh, speed changes that you can change in there to be whatever you want. So if you can select multiple clips and do that at once, that's pretty sweet. I like that. Again, quality of life and workflow thing that just helps speed things up a little bit. When you're adding an effect to a clip, it's going to automatically change the inspector to the effects tab, right? So instead of adding the effect, we're going to open the inspector, then click on the effects tab in the inspector, it's automatically going to show us that effects tab. So again, it's just a small little step, but if you're applying a lot of effects, it's going to help speed up your workflow, right? Cut out some of that time of having to click another thing. It's just going to do it for you. Uh, another one I thought was pretty good here. The playhead position is restored when undoing edit actions. So if I'm sitting there, control Z, control Z, undo, undo. What that tells me is that it's going to take our playhead, boom, move it back to, um, you know, wherever the position was when, you know, I undid a particular action, right? Maybe I was further down the timeline or something. It's going to put the playhead there as I'm undoing things. So I like that. That's kind of cool. There are a few other things on here, but uh, the last one I want to mention under the cut and edit uh, section is the retime curve context menu now displays both curves. So I'm not exactly sure I got to open up uh, a project here. Actually, you know, what? let's just jump. Let's jump on resolve and check this out. Getting into resolve here. I'm just going to click a clip. I'm going to right click. And if we go to uh, change clip speed. No, that's not what I want. That's not what I want here. Zoom in. What I want to do is the retime controls. So let's just click this guy. We're going to go retime controls and retime curve. So it looks like uh, we got retime speed, retime frame. Let's see if I do this guy. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what, what why, why, what could, retime curve, retime controls. There's that. And then I wish they had a keyboard shortcut for the retime curve. That would be handy, right? If we could just pop up the retime curve. So Shows both curves. I'm not exactly sure what it's referring to here. I'm going to have to look into that and get back to you on that one. So we're going to see what that is. But it sounds like it's going to be handy. Don't know what it is yet, but it sounds like it's going to be handy. Some other stuff that you guys might be interested in general. We've got uh, two times faster neural engine performance for NVIDIA um, Tensor RT. I'm not familiar with that. I'm a Mac guy, but you guys on PC, if you got that, you're going to be happy about that. Four times faster neural engine performance on modern AMD GPUs. So you're going to like that. And uh, that's pretty much, I'm sure it's a studio version there because the studio uses GPU. Free doesn't really use the GPU. Quick access to black magic. Oh, I'm sorry. It helps if I read the right line. Quick access to recent projects from the application menu. So you could just jump right into a project that's going to speed up just opening things up a little bit. So I like that. These are going to be pretty cool here. You've got the ability to import and export power bins as .drb files. So we've been asking for this for a long time. How do we um, like save our power bins, right? If I got to upgrade or new database and I got to remake my power bins, I don't do that. So here now we have the option to import and export DRB uh, files for our power bins, which is cool. Ability to import and export render presets. So I can save my presets out. I can save them out for you guys if I, if I want. And you got a bunch of other cool things in here. Support for decoding low latency AAC formats in Mac, which is audio. You can now support for decoding GIFs. You can drop a GIF in there and it'll work. And we actually, if you were watching Alex's live stream, he did that, dropped it in. And, uh, and that worked out pretty good. Um, so that's some of the media and codecs. Uh, announcements there in that section. Pretty cool. A lot of good stuff in here. As always, I mean, there's just they, they pack in so many awesome features here. Uh, it's it's pretty amazing how how quick that Blackmagic adds stuff into not only DaVinci Resolve but all of their equipment and their stuff. It's just it's so good. 
uh, love all their stuff. They do a great job, Black Magic. We love you guys. We really appreciate all the hard work that you guys put in to all this stuff and getting everything out to us so quick. Really appreciate it. It is awesome. Um, and, you know, we just we can't thank you enough for the hard work that you guys put in. So I'm going to be digging into this stuff a little bit more. I've got a lot of videos planned coming up uh, in the next bunch of weeks. Got some other really cool things that I'm working on, which uh, we'll talk about as we get to them here on the channel. But most of all, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you tuning in, coming to learn some DaVinci Resolve with me, learn some audio, get your audio sounding better, and, uh, and, and really learn a lot of the basics of DaVinci Resolve in how to work with it and how to make your videos awesome. Um, really appreciate you guys tuning in to me and to all of our other awesome uh, friends and creators here on YouTube that talk all things DaVinci Resolve. All right, guys, with that said, you're tired of hearing me ramble, but that is some of the cool updates here. And uh, with that said, I will see you in the next video. Peace.